Hey everyone, Ash here, and tonight I'm doing my top five best films of 2011, and my top five worst films of 2011, and maybe one or two honorable mentions. But these films, I just recently saw them, um, but they didn't come out in 2011, so I'll mention them, even though they haven't, even though they won't be on the list. They are still great films. Um, top five best films: number five, Thor. Thor was actually surprise surprised the crap out of me. Uh, it was a good film. It was an enjoyable film. Um, it, I think it just because it didn't take itself all that seriously at times. It had it, it had a good cast. I enjoyed I enjoyed the action scenes. It was just a good film to watch. It was very enjoyable. I was surprised, really surprised about that one. Um, so yeah, number five, Thor. Number four, Battle L.A. Or Battle Los Angeles, whatever which one's it ever called. I just rewatched this film again on Netflix, and this one is still a good film. I enjoy it. it actually, was better the second time around. The actions, the action's actually quite nice. It's nice to watch the way they fight. You know, it's nice that they're actually having a actual. It's actually the military this time, because most alien invasion movies, it's the. Um, it's about the uh, civilians. It's about oh well, it's the civilians, you know. We have to focus on them, not the military. Fuck that. I want to see the military fight. I get fed up with these alien films that focus on the innocent people. I want to see the Marines go against an alien race. And we finally saw that here in Battle A. It was actually quite nice. I enjoyed the story. I could story. It's a popcorn film. That simple. And it's quite enjoyable. So number four, Battle L.A. Number three. Sherlock Holmes. Um, good movies. I enjoyed this. Actually, this is a sequel. Sherlock Holmes too. Uh, I enjoyed this one a lot. Actually, surprisingly, it was um, enjoyable. Robert Downey Jr. is a great as always. Um, I actually thought this was better than the first one. I didn't really care for the first one that much. Um, had a good story, a good plot. Really enjoyable film. Nothing overkill here or there. It just it felt like one of those really well done films that had a good pacing and good speed, but first Sherlock Holmes didn't have a really good speed. It kind of was a little slow at times. So this one had much better speed and I felt like it moved quicker, which was a nice feature also. Um, so yeah, number three, Sherlock Holmes 2. Number two, Harry Potter and Death Hollows Part 2. Um, really? This was the best Harry Potter film I've seen. I've seen all the Harry Potter movies. This one was the best. The best acting. Uh, probably the most intense of them. Uh, good acting by, like, best acting, like I said. Uh, especially Daniel Radcliffe, who did an amazing job as Harry. Um, and, you know, in general, just a very enjoyable film. I think the best one they did, and I did like its ending. In general, just a good film. Really enjoyable, so it makes the list of number two. So what's number one? X-Men First Class. Finally an X-Men film without Wolverine. That's first and foremost, thank you, God. I was sick and tired of every fucking film having Wolverine. I, it, it sh even the first three X-Men films should have been just called Wolverine. Because they focused more on him than the rest of the X-Men. This one actually focused on the fucking X-Men. Magneto is fucking badass. They did a great job with Magneto. He was fucking badass in this film. The best. It was the best film. It was enjoyable. Had a great plot. Just in general, just an amazing film. I loved watching it. It was one of the best films of the year without hesitation. So, number one, X-Men First Class. Next up, top five worst films of 2011.